This is just a little quick room tour. We have the two tanks up there with um, just freshwater shrimp in them. Um, for those of you who don't know that side of me, I do wholesale to pretty much the whole US. And that's where I filmed the video that you, the start of this video, the unboxing. Jerry rigged it. This is the first girl. Um, need help with names, go ahead and comment um, down below for this lady. And this guy. This is the one that we just unboxed. Really gorgeous. Great temperament. That's kind of how I set them up. This is the little baby down here. She's not doing too hot. She went off of food after I had to uh, do a little surgery on her to remove some dead tissue off of her tail. I'll go ahead and show you. She's, um, Pretty docile, and we went with Ponyo for her name. As I said, she's docile. I'll we'll just go in and show you. She's gonna be super red. She's a hypo translucent leatherback. This one is just a normal. Um, he's actually. A leatherback and he's also het for hypo trans and zero so he'll be a perfect pair with my visual zero close that one and this is my tra hypo translucent hypo translucent zero sorry this glass gets annoying when you're trying to film stuff but this is her she is a little dirty after eating plenty of dubia roaches as you can tell by her belly I'll go ahead and show you how I feed them in a tub too in this video. This is just their regular setup, the grape wood or the grapevine, it's sandblasted. So you do have to spray it down to get all that sand bits out of there. But then I just throw that on top of, um, just like your advertisement newspaper, we have a UVB light covering the majority of the tank. Um, a minimum requirement is going to be two thirds covering the tank. It's a 10.0. I never use a 5.0. And this right here, that's just a ceramic heat emitter. That's what I use for all of the tanks. And keeps the spots around here around like 105 to 110 if she climbs up all the way to the top and she's just a little grumpy but she's really good she's taming down quite nicely and as you can see she's very well fed um, continuing the room tour I just have a couple plants um, ficus mini bonsai a couple bonsai actually and then some desert roses and then some other bonsai and some plants that I grow out and then I use for kind of like this stuff um, this is just a quick aqu aquascape that I did. It's I just flooded it. It's dealing with some algae right now, so I'm not going to go too into detail. But um, let's kind of quick look at that. I love it. It's amazing. Custom built stand. Everything. CO2 running. Filter. Everything's good. Copacetic. Going over to here, you have my little closet. Um, and then my ball file rack right here. A um, couple skeletons that I do. 
Uh, we got a springbok over there from Africa. This is a coyote skull that I just did. It's very dope. Um, just looking around the room real quick. It's kind of what I do for photography if you haven't noticed. Um, this right here is uh, my custom made incubator. Incubates all these eggs. Um, we just had two hatch out within the last like two weeks. Um, there's two more in there, two more on the way. It's kicking off kind of slow. Only a couple of my females I'm thinking about breeding. We got a male right here. <laughs> this is the father to the two babies that you'll see right over here. He's his first year breeding, but he's a big boy. Chat little guy. Actually, let me pull him down. This is a white and yellow snow. Um, bold striped bell, and he's head for eclipse. So we got really good babies out of him. And I'll skip these and show you just the mother. I don't wanna mess around too much. As you can see, she's kind of digging around. Let's actually see if she laid any eggs. And it looks like we might have some eggs. So we'll check in that video or we'll check within this video and see if there is. And she's just a Bell Enigma head um, eclipse and head, possible head blizzard. If you guys know anything about that, the gecko, sorry. And this one right here, it's a Mandarin, Tangerine, Blood Cross, Enigma, and she's het for Nordizer and possible het for Trumper. She's ovulating. The mate that I'm trying to pair her with is just getting up to size and he's just reaching maturity. It's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. And she's very orange. She's awesome. Very curious. All my animals are super friendly. Um, let's go to the baby. So right in here we have the Bell Enigma and he's looking like it's tangerine. Or actually these were actually um, temp sex for female, so I shouldn't say him. All these dubia sheddings. Um, they just had their first meal yesterday after they do their first poop and first shed. And this is the white and yellow snow bold stripe bell. Absolutely beautiful. This is just their setups. They don't have any um, bowls yet. Still getting used to all that. And this one right here, a little messy. This one eats like a freaking pig. I change these out weekly. And this is her right here. Sorry, it's not focusing in. She's absolutely stunning. It's gonna be the Tangerine Snow Radar. And right here, that's the mother. And this one is the white and, white and yellow tangerine bell. And then she's also possible head to clips. This one I got from um, Bold and Bright Geckos. She also eats like a monster if you can't tell by her bowl. She's absolutely stunning. And then last but not least, we have this one's just a mandarin tangerine and then 66% tremper and a possible het nor deserve. So we're trying to prove him out with that lady. As you can see, he's very orange. He's one of the nicest ones too, honestly. Like watch this. Sorry, buddy. He literally like just let you pet him. Just weird because I'm holding the camera and everything too, so it's probably like, uh, what's going on here? Good down, bud. So yeah, that's just the little rack. Those are the eggs, and right now we'll just check the female, see if we got any eggs. Cool. So I safely removed the female, um, just getting her away from the eggs. She likes to lay them all the way down at the bottom, so I'll kind of go through here and see. Kind of feel something right here, and it looks like she did lay another clutch. So, we'll go ahead and pop these out right here. That one kind of looks smaller than the other ones, so it might be a dud. 
and this one is really deflated. So we'll go ahead and get him into the incubator as soon as possible. Alrighty, boys and girls, unfortunately, um, they do both look like duds. I didn't see any embryo in them when I candled them. And as you can see, this one's just really soft. And they do retain sperm for a while, so that's why I didn't pair her after the initial, initial lock. But um, I might have to just put her in with the male again, because it looks like she is going to be laying more eggs. And if she's gonna be laying eggs, I want her to have fertile eggs, you know what I'm saying? These ones are fertile. They're about um, three weeks in, so they should be looking great. For the insects that can't be put in bowls, um, dubias or crickets that usually tend to crawl or jump out, this is how I feed them. I throw in a tub and obviously you can see they have no problem with me after I put them in there. So this avoids like them crawling around your whole entire tank. And gentlemen, let's talk about diet. Especially with baby bearded dragons, um, their diet's gonna be mainly protein, which means you're gonna be getting and feeding a lot of insects. Um, they may seem very small, but actually they'll eat around 20 to 50 dubia slash crickets a day. And that can get pretty costly if you're going to your reptile store or Petco just every week or even like every day. So what I do is I do bulk shipments and I get these from uh, Rainbow Millworms. And when I order, you can either get like the combo packs for baby bearded dragons if you just have one, but usually that just doesn't cut it for me anymore. So I'll get an order of hornworms, 25 count. Um, I fed most of the babies off and these things multiply like by the day, almost doubling their size. So what you're going to want to do is maybe keep these in the refrigerator, um, slow down the metabolism. These are super worms. If you notice, I don't really have a lot of these because they are like crack and they're super fatty to these guys. See, she loves them. She just knows what this is already. Um, a steady and staple diet, I would say it would be these right here. Or I, I think they're like bot flies or something like that. Um, the phoenix worms. Black soldier fly larvae. I think that's what it's called, sorry. And um, I just get like a hundred large of these and she loves them and she loves the hornworms, but hornworms are more like treats. If you're gonna do a staple diet, I would do dubia and maybe the black soldier fly larvae. And these are a great source of calcium. I throw them in as a treat with her greens. Um, she did actually eat some of her greens yesterday, not a whole lot. Um, protein to veggies, I would say it's going to be around like 80% protein to 20% veggies. I chop up um, some collard greens, some mustard greens, and I have organic food here that I grow like carrots, romaine lettuce, stuff like that. You want to stay away from like iceberg lettuce. It's not really a tr nutritional value for them. And this guy's brand new, so I will hold off on feeding him. But I will do, be doing a soak since you can see since the last video I filmed earlier today, she's um, shedding a lot of her skin off. That's what happens. Um, these guys are growing really quick, eating so much every day. They're going to shed um, a lot. And what, how often should you soak? Some people say twice a week, every other day. Personally, um, my bearded dragons drink the water while I give to them. Uh, that's why you don't see me having a water bowl in their cage. Um, that serves two purposes. Uh, what if I keep a water bowl in there and I'm not checking on them constantly, they can drown really easily. So you don't wanna spend $400 on a baby um, just like this from unicorns and dragons and have it die in a water bowl. That's really a, um, kinda ignorant for somebody to do that. So. I just soak them every day. They love it. Uh, I keep the temperatures between 80 and 85 degrees, the water that is, and they just, they sit in it, all, all of them at the same time, and they have a blast. They drink a lot of the water, and I use a syringe and I soak them. I'll show you guys how I do that. I'll be throwing her in, uh, this new guy in, and I might give Ponyo her separate bath, just because she's a little kind of crazy. Um, crazy she's not eating so um, unicorns and dragons actually help me out I usually have rapashi for these guys 
It's like a little mix you can make if they go off food or you're kind of trying to save a leopard gecko, but this works the best. It's organic banana baby food, the banana flavor basically. And you're gonna give that to them. I'll show you how I do that. Um, and I, I'll walk you through a surgery that I did with her also. Uh, that's just basic here, guys. Um, if you want to click off the video now, I know it's getting a little long, but um, all we're gonna... yikes! All we're gonna be doing after is soaking and um, maybe feeding this little one. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and on to the next part. Alrighty, guys. So this is how I bathe and soak the bearded dragons. I pull out one of the tubs from my ball file rack, set it in here. Well, actually, I sanitize it first wash it out with um, some Simply Green and fill it up just a little bit, especially because the little one's in there. Um, I wouldn't fill it up that much unless you're watching them. And then I have these two right in here. You're soaking it up and yeah, I just let it sit like this for 15, 20 minutes while I supervise them. And while it's going on, I'll show you guys how I kind of get them to drink and soak their heads. Alrighty guys, so I use a syringe. Um, you can use a little pipette, a turkey baster, whatever works for you guys. We have the Hypotrans Zero right there. And then the leather bag, I think he's the Hypotrans and Zero. And we have the little Hypotranslucent back there. So we just take this, you don't want to scare them because you're coming from above too much. Just start dropping a little bit on their head. This temperature of the water is around 30, oh I mean sorry, 80 to 85 degrees. Sorry, I'm trying to focus and film. You want to keep this out of their ears and keep it away from their nose. Their scales are kind of um, built to pull it away from their nose, their eyes, and their ears. As you can see, I'm dropping it straight onto his head and it's going around. And just keep an eye out like on all your bearded dragons too. Like with everybody going around, this little beardy is just soaking around. See what I'm saying? If you don't watch your beardies, that water will go right over their nose or they'll just sit in it and drown. So just make sure you keep an eye on your dragons while they're soaking. Make sure everybody's having a good time, staying friendly. And you wanna do this for 15 to 20 minutes. Why I do it in here is because it's already um, ambient temperature of around 80 degrees inside the tank, especially with the heat emitter kicking around. If you want, close the glass a little bit and it'll keep that temperature a lot longer than your room that's around 70 to 75 degrees. So there you guys go. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. We'll try to push out more videos. Um, leave a comment down below if you want a specific video. Um, also, we're trying to name this one right here and the zero. This one's Panyo, so yeah. Thank you guys for watching. All right guys, Ponyo is done with her bath. And as you can see, she has a tail nip. It was a lot more severe than that. Um, she's less than a month old. Um, we got her in when she was around 27 days old. And it's just been sad. The breeder just pretty much gave her to me, trying to help save her. I had to um, cut off and snip the dead tissue away from her tail. And she ate before that, and ever since then, she's just, just kind of shied away from food. You can see her hips now. Um, her skin's a little bit more wrinkly, not as much fat. And I'm just gonna be applying some more antibi antibiotics onto her tail. And she's hydrating, she's just not eating. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And the antibiotics that you want to use in this case scenario is just, this is what I use. And what you want to stay away from is any um, pain reliever. So all this has is the bacitracin zinc, neomycin sulfate, and polymycin B sulfate. And all that is is just antibiotics. You just want to make sure that there's just antibiotics and not pain relievers in it. 
So all I do is I put a little tip on her tail with a Q-tip and make sure it has a well coat over it and it's healing up nicely. Um, yeah, just wish her the best, guys. I'm trying and obviously like I care for my animals, but I'll try my best with this one. She did eat a little bit of that um, organic banana baby food. It's just, I want her to kind of pick it up already. Wish us luck, guys. Thanks. <laughs>